Good morning. It's nice to be here again. I have been here some time ago now, but it's a great pleasure and privilege to be, to be here again today. I don't know, are there any special notices nobody's told me about? At the end you do the notices, okay, that's fine. Right. Right, well then we turn to our order of service. <coughs> the Lord be with you. And, <coughs> and uh, we sit or kneel perhaps for our opening prayers. <coughs> Let us pray. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. <coughs> Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, <coughs> love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. <coughs> Lord, Lord, have mercy. <coughs> As we come into God's presence, we know that there are things in our lives which we need to say sorry to God for. So let us say the first confession together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your son jesus christ who died for us forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name amen almighty god who forgives all who truly repent have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> and we stand to say the Gloria. <clears throat> we say together, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth, Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. <clears throat> For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Almighty God, whose only Son has opened for us a new and living way into thy presence, grant that with pure hearts and constant wills we may worship thee in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with thee, with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> <clears throat> the lesson is taken from the book of James, chapter 1. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, 
coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves, and on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand for the gospel. <clears throat> Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around him, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked Jesus, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within and they defile a person. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. <clears throat> May I speak in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. At this time of year, I think many people are thinking about exams and exam results. And it's not an easy time for those who've taken them or have been waiting for them or perhaps have received them. And I don't know quite how we is going to, to do. We think particularly of the different grades that people can get. A, A stars for some people, Bs, Cs or whatever. It can be an anxious time waiting around. But it's very good, I think, that schools these days are giving good support to uh, children and young people as they await the results of their exams. 
Now, from St. James, uh, I have four little thoughts beginning with the letter A, or Alpha in the Greek. It would be presumptuous of me to give James an Alpha for this epistle. I think we should give him at least an Alpha plus. Because the great thing about James' epistle is that it's so practical. It's so down to earth. Paul gives us a theology, particularly in Romans and some of his wonderful epistles like that. But James, doesn't he, brings it down to earth and helps us to apply it to our daily lives. And in chapter uh, 1 of our epistle, verse 17, he writes these words. There's something to acknowledge. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or due to change. Although the COVID virus may sadly mutate and change, and we face all sorts of changes in our own lives, we know that God, our Heavenly Father, doesn't change. His light, his love is steadfast and constant. How do we cope with change in our lives? Changes at work, perhaps, if we are employed? Changes at home? Changes in our health, our family life, friendships, relationships, changes in the church. How do we cope with it? I heard of a vicar who um, wanted to move the piano, over there, as we say, to over there. And the church was totally opposed to change. They didn't like the idea of anything being changed at all. So what did he do? He moved the piano one inch every week. <laughs> I don't know what it was like when it got out to here. <laughs> but after a few months, he got there. I think you'll agree with me that we want to be more open to change than that. We don't want change for change's sake. But sometimes we need change for God's sake. Changes so that the kingdom of heaven can move forward. Changes so that the Holy Spirit, Spirit can move more freely among us. So as we thank God, for every gift that he gives us, and there are many, let us also be ready for change, as directed by the Holy Spirit. Not change for change's sake, no, but change where the Holy Spirit may guide us. So that's my first A, something to acknowledge. Every good gift comes from him. Let's be ready to be guided and led forward by him. My second A comes in verse 18 of James chapter 1 something to appreciate. James says that in fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of creation. We give thanks, of course, for physical life, for birth, that we're here, and that we can enjoy all the many good things, not least the creation and the beauty of creation that we see all around us. But here, he's talking not about that, but about spiritual birth. We are being born, he says, by the word of truth. Do you remember how Jesus met Nicodemus on one occasion? A very religious man, a strict Pharisee. If anybody kept the law and the religious observances correctly, it was Nicodemus. But even to him, Jesus says to Nicodemus, if you want to get into the kingdom of God, if you want to know real spiritual life, you've got to go through this new birth of the Spirit. It doesn't happen by blood, he said, it doesn't happen by ancestry, even if we're blessed with Christian parents, and thank God if we are. Nor by the will of the flesh, just by human effort. Nor by the will of man, just when I think I will. No, he says, it's by the will of God. It's a gift from God. And so we thank God for the new birth of the Spirit, which he's able to give to us by the Spirit, when we turn to him in repentance, in thankfulness to the Saviour who died for our sins on the cross, and with thankfulness for his resurrection, that he's alive now with us. And also we thank him for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Something to acknowledge, therefore, everything good, every good gift comes from God. Something to appreciate that God offers us a new life, a new birth, a new gift, through the Holy Spirit. So that, he says, James says, we can bring forth fruit. We can bear spiritual fruit in our lives to the glory of God. My third A is something to abstain from. 
James 1 verse 19. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore rid yourself of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness. Verse 21. It's hard-hitting stuff. It's having been up in the heavens, as it were, hearing about the new birth of the Spirit and the new life that God offers to us and all his other gifts. Here we are reminded that there are things that we need to say no to if we're going to receive all that God wants to give to us. And one of the things that we need to discover is that we learn to listen, listen to God and listen to one another, listen to other people. I heard of one man who described a friend in this way. His thoughts were slow, his words were few and never formed to glisten. But he was a joy to all his friends. You should have heard him listen. I wonder how good we are at listening not always putting forward our own ideas and our own viewpoint. That's a place for that, of course there is. But really listening to one another so that we can understand how they're feeling and thinking. And above all, listening to God by his spirit, through the scriptures, through circumstances of life, through different ways in which God speaks to us. So we need to be developing, I think, our listening skills. And he also, James, calls us to be slow to anger. There's a difference, isn't there, between righteous indignation and just blowing our top. <laughs> God, if you like, I think is a kind of divine gardener. We must ask him to root out, help us root out any weeds in our lives which are displeasing and unfruitful and produce good fruit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, as we walk in faith and obedience. Something to acknowledge, that all good gifts come from God. Something to appreciate, God's gift of spiritual new birth, as by repentance and faith we come to Christ as Saviour and Lord. Something to abstain from, hasty words, self-centred anger, and all sordidness and wickedness. And my last A is something to accept. James says in verse 21, Welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. And be doers of the word, not merely hearers. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in the mirror and on going away, immediately forget what they were like. Martin Luther, the German reformer, once described James's letter as an epistle of straw, lacking much spiritual depth. But surely we need the epistle of James as much as we need the epistle of Paul to the Romans. Because James is so practical, so down to earth, so real. And uh, he's prepared for us to face us with things that may need to be changed. Because, he says, our tongue can be a power for good and a power for evil. James has written about the importance of patience. We must be slow to anger, he says. Our anger isn't in in always righteous. There may be wounded pride. There may be malice. There may be envy and unrighteous anger. So, says James, we need to go deeper with God, deeper with his word, the Bible. Be doers of the word, he says, not hearers only, deceiving ourselves. Otherwise, he says, we will be like someone who looks at himself in the mirror sees something that needs cleaning or tidying up, but does nothing about, about it. He's such a practical person, James, isn't he? And we thank God for him. So, in conclusion, we must be doers of God's word, not just hearers. We should thank God for our worship, thank God for our services and sermons, thank God for our scriptures. Hopefully we read them regularly, but we need to be people who should are doers of the word and not hearers only. And if we are, then that last verse in this part of James' epistle will be true for us. Those who look into the perfect law of liberty, the Bible, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. So as we sit, may we have a prayer. 
Lord, we thank you for your word, the Bible. Help us, we pray, to read it for ourselves as well as learn about it in church. And then help us, we pray, to put it into practice in our lives with your help. We thank you for the blessing that it brings to our lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now let us stand and join together in the creed. <clears throat> we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. When you hear, Lord, hear us this morning, please respond with, Lord, graciously hear us. Brothers and sisters in God's family, let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness and his many gifts. God our Father, we remember before you the kaleidoscope of people we call the church those who help organise our church and have so much to think about on Sunday mornings that they scarcely have time for their own worship. We pray for Reverend Christopher this morning, celebrating communion for us here at St John's. We pray for Lynn, keeping things running smoothly in Chris and Karen's absence. We pray for the older person who slips quietly in and out of church and just needs to be there uninterrupted. We pray for the people sitting and kneeling near us now, known and precious to you. May your blessing reach rest on each one. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God our Father, we remember before you the world's great needs and its unnoticed sorrows. The countries where some are intoxicated with war, but most desperately weary of it. We think of Afghanistan. We pray for people left behind and the fear and devastation they face. The countries where a silent slaughter is still happening 
while the world's gaze has moved on. Countries in deep need where children die for want of clean water and a spoonful of sugar. And we pray for the people of Haiti trying to rebuild their lives after the devastating earthquake two weeks ago. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God, our Father, we remember before you our families, friends and the communities where we live. We especially remember for wholeness and healing, for Chris and Karen, Veronique, David, Carol and Emma, Julian Legood, David, Claire and Mia. We also pray for the person who has a special problem to deal with that may be known to us. The friend who we have neglected for too long. The neighbour who always looks so burdened and anxious. May your blessing rest on each person, the place to renew and transform them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God our Father, we remember before you individuals in need of hope, and we name them silently in your presence. On our heart is someone in hospital or ill at home. On our heart is someone suffering from depression or confusion. On our heart is someone suffering from the multiple problems of old age. And on our hearts are Carol and David Watson, whose son died in a tragic road traffic accident this week. But on our hearts is also the memory of a Lord who loved and healed and saved. May your blessing rest on each person we have named. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God our Father, we remember before you those who have died. The close relation who we still miss. The friend whose early death will always sadden us. We remember Joan Stevens. The people in the news who died tragically this week. And we especially remember Tom Watson only 30 years old, who died in that horrific accident, along with two other ladies. Our thoughts and prayers are with all their families. And we pray for the child in a distant land, unknown to us, but known and loved by you. Grant us with all who have known you in their hearts a share in your internal kingdom. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you.
we come now to the peace, and I, I'm not sure whether we actually shake hands, but you can either do an ecclesiastical bow, or you can do that, or just a nod, whatever you think is best. So let's stand for the peace. <laughs> Jesus came and stood in the midst and said, Peace be with you. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. So may the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. <laughs> <clears throat> Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor and the majesty for everything in heaven on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. <clears throat> Let us pray. I'm going to use prayer E. <clears throat> Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death, and so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. 
This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice, made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. <clears throat> Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, Grant us peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith. With thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Lord God, the source of truth and love, keep us faithful to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, united in prayer and the breaking of bread, and one in joy and simplicity of heart, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say the first prayer together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. <clears throat> May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Say that one. Not want to say it. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. I think we've got some notices now. Yes, thank you. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the Reverend Christopher Christopher Plissard Barnes for leading our worship this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice to be here. And if the sermon, um, you know, twigged anything about doing, and you think, do you know what, I could, please see me. I feel like a school teacher, see me. <laughs> Plenty of stuff on here today, so please read it, thank you. Yes, yes. 